Hi guys, welcome back to Dudley Central. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I created an industrial diorama on an 8 inch square um, board. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this build, uh, tried out loads of new techniques and I hope you find uh, this video useful for any future projects that you might have. In this build I first started out with the scale model scenery diorama board. Uh, these are really excellent kits, uh, they're laser cut and uh, they glue together really well. Um, initially I took the back scene board and put it to one side uh, as this was going to be something I'd pick up later on. Um, but to assemble the pieces I just used standard PVA wood glue and uh, this gave a good uh, secure fit. After assembling all the pieces together uh, with the glue in place, I then uh, place some weights on top. Um, anything will do. I use some tubes of glue and paint, and uh, then I left uh, the board to set for a couple of hours, uh, just to make sure there was a strong bond between the pieces. So whilst I left my diorama board uh, to go off. Uh, I went about actually dropping uh, dropper wires onto the track. Um, what I tend to do is uh, solder directly onto the rails uh, rather than the fish plates. Uh, I find this gives a better conductivity uh, between your power source and the track. So what I like to do for, at first is uh, to drop a blob of solder onto the rail, um, put a bit of solder on the end of the wire and then bring the two together and uh, heat it up and I find you get a nice um, nice neat and a strong connection between the wire and the rail and then uh, you don't tend to have any issues uh, with the rails picking up uh, your power. So after a few hours uh, I returned back to the diorama board came back with a pencil and ruler. I wanted to mark out uh, how my diorama was actually going to take shape. Uh, I used a standard HB pencil and a steel ruler uh, just to make sure I got uh, very straight lines. Um, you might not want to use a steel ruler um, if, you, if your little diorama has got bends and curves in it um, but for mine that's what I wanted to go with and um, it was quite helpful um, as you'll see the build go on. Once I was happy um, I then went and cut out a piece of card. Uh, I used 2mm thick card for this and uh, this was glued uh, in the area where the track would be and uh, it was essentially a track bed and it would give it a little bit of profile would just help it look a little bit more realistic. I then went on to do the same thing um, where the supplies and the um, arc welder would be sitting. I then uh, cut out the area uh, where the uh, piece of track would be uh, just because of how the uh, lighting kit of the arc welder uh, works so uh, and you'll see that later on as the uh, the build proceeds. I then went on to um, cut another piece and this would be where the supplies and the arc welder would be. Uh, I wanted to test fit a few parts just to make sure uh, the size was right and then uh, remove the section where the um, arc welder would be sitting as um, just due to the nature of how the arc welder lighting kit worked so this section was cut out um, using a very sharp knife and um, I then went about fitting the uh, kit in place and then uh, testing it just to see if it worked. For the train tech LED uh, I needed to cut a small hole um, in a piece of 2mm thick card. Um, I 
wanted to determine where it was going to go on the track uh, so I firstly marked uh, the sleeper where it was going to sit I then placed the track on the card um, and then found um, a suitable place to cut the hole out for the, um, for the little lighting module So uh, before gluing that section down I uh, decided I'd work on the uh, tarmac scene just to the, uh, to the left of that. Um, I figured it'd look a bit neater if the tarmac went underneath um, because once you've glued it in uh, any sort of overspill of paint uh, will be nicely hidden. So what I did, uh, I used masking tape and um, followed the line which I'd uh, penciled in earlier on and then went about adding some textured paint. For this I used green scene, uh, I used green scene concrete paint and green scene asphalt. I find mixing the two uh, gives a nice, um, a nice colour and a nice texture. Um, sometimes I think the uh, roads that look totally black don't really look too realistic. And, uh, I prefer just having a kind of uh, more grey colour and um, I then went about stippling it with the brush because um, I didn't want it to look really smooth, I wanted it to look quite well used um, and I thought this would look a bit more realistic. I then um, left that to dry uh, for a couple of hours again uh, just to make sure it went off properly. The next thing I did uh, whilst letting the paint dry was um, placing my piece of track which I'd uh, put wires in uh, before and I wanted to mark uh, where I'd need to draw some holes uh, for these wires to be dropped through. Uh, likewise I did the same uh, with the arc welding scene as you can see and um, just drilled the holes and then dropped the wires in uh, just to make sure they fit properly. With the arc welding kit uh, in place, I then uh, went and placed my uh, figure alongside. Uh, and this figure was from Langley Models. Um, it was white metal, so I painted this one up. Um, but it does have a little uh, stump at the bottom, um, which you need to drill a hole for. So I needed to put the scene down uh, to see where the uh, where the welder would need to go. Um, I then went ahead and drilled the hole for him and glued that in. Once I was happy uh, I went about actually gluing in um, where the um, where the track would go with the arc welding. Uh, I used rocket card glue for this uh, I find that's brilliant for uh, securing things down uh, quickly and uh, strongly so I put, put my uh, two millimeter fit card in place um, and the idea for that was um, so that the uh, train tech light uh, wouldn't be pronounced it will sit quite snugly uh, underneath the uh, section of track that was going to sit on top. Moving on, whilst I let this uh, go off I use my masking tape again um, using the lines that I put out before 
Now these were to demark where the ballast would go on the track. So I used that um, and then I got my medium grey ballast and uh, used a teaspoon to uh, put that on and put it along the sides uh, and used a brush to brush off any bits that I wasn't happy with and um, the masking tape was good at controlling where the ballast would go. <laughs> I then came along with a teaspoon and tapped the top of the rails. Uh, I find this is quite a good way of uh, stopping ballast from collecting on top of sleepers and in the rails themselves. Um, if it gets caught in the rails it can cause problems uh, with your trains moving and uh, if it gets stuck on top of the uh, sleepers it can look unrealistic although sometimes it, you, in some cases you do get ballast uh, on top uh, but it's not very common. Once I was happy I came in with the glue uh, to secure it I used a mix of uh, PVA with water 50-50 and then I also added a couple of drops of washing up liquid and uh, this helps the, um, the glue actually get within the uh, ballast uh, breaking the surface tension. Then left this to go off uh, for 24 hours, uh, it's always good to uh, leave diluted glue uh, a good while uh, to set. I then came back um, and removed the masking tape that I'd left before and uh, this gave me a nice clean edge and um, I was quite happy with that. I then went about uh, doing my track weathering. Um, I don't have an airbrush myself so I uh, hand painted it. I did a video uh, a couple of years back now actually about track weathering and I'll put the link here um, but what I do is I use acrylic paint and I just come along and paint the rails um, down each side and then I um, switch it around and uh, come along in the same fashion on the other side Something new that I tried this time, uh, I used a very dilute solution of uh, acrylic paint. Uh, I used burnt umber for this and I literally filled a pot with water and put a drop of paint in there um, just to give you an idea of how dilute it was. And I came along and dabbed the uh, brown paint on the ballast. Now, when I first put this down I was quite worried with how uh, brown it was looking um, but after a couple of minutes the brown seeped in to the ballast and um, it gave a nice dirty effect. Um, I quite liked it actually. Uh, so I left that to go off. Um, again, I left that for a few hours um, because I wanted to make sure it dried properly. So the next thing I did, um, I wanted to look at the concrete slab uh, where all the um, all the construction materials will be sitting. Again, I just used my uh, two millimeter card, uh, which had cut out uh, to shape and then came along with the Woodland Scenics uh, concrete uh, paint. This can give quite a nice smooth uh, concrete appearance. Um, sometimes you might want that uh, rather than a broken textured bit. Um, on, on some of my yards at work um, the well kept yards are generally kept quite smooth. Whilst I left the um, slab dry, I went about actually painting the um, the ground um, between the tarmac and the ballast. Again, I used my burnt umber acrylic paint to do this and painted all the way around, um, and even on top of the uh, uh, the circuit board which has the LED on. Just being really careful not to get any paint on there. Um, and what I wanted to do was get a nice. Um, 
and a nice join up between the tarmac and the ballast. I wasn't too worried if I went over a little bit um, because this would actually make it look as if mud spilled onto each, um, which gives it more of a natural appearance. I didn't want it to be too uniform. Um, I do have, as you can see, very straight lines along that board, so a bit of overlap um, would just help that and uh, make it look a bit more realistic. With my slab now dry, uh, I came in with a craft knife and uh, just very gently uh, drove it across the slab uh, just because I wanted to make a couple of cracks, uh, not very obvious ones, um, but just a couple just to make it look a lit little bit aged um, but not totally uh, destroyed. Um, but I just wanted to sort of show some kind of settling cracks. I then came in with the weathering powders. Uh, I used a combination of dark earth and um, smoke, uh, and these are by Humbrol. I came in with a, a nice soft brush and uh, brushed these over. And uh, as you can see, this this makes that very clean, um, creamy concrete colour. Um, quite dirty now, and uh, I was quite happy with how that came out. After putting those weathering powders down, uh, I came in with a, uh, an acrylic matte varnish. Um, it's good to spray this in a well ventilated area. Uh, so as you can see there's no spray coming out of the can there. Um, but once you've got the varnish on, it seals the powders and it means once uh, if, you, if you rub your finger over it, um, you're not going to get mucky hands and you're not going to uh, remove your weathering. With my weathering powders still at hand, uh, I returned back to the track work. Uh, I had previously used um, a wash on um, the ballast and I was quite happy for how that looked. However, I wanted to add some smoke and uh, some kind of oil patches uh, between the rails. So I used the smoke again um, in this area and um, some more of a dark earth on the sides just to kind of highlight uh, the mud going into the ballast and uh, th this is a, a combination I tend to use in all my projects actually uh, having a kind of darker black colour in the middle and uh, the browns uh, either s on the either side of the rail um, as you find this is quite common on the real railway uh, again come in uh, with your acrylic matte varnish and that will seal that all in Once you're happy, uh, it's good to leave uh, your diorama uh, for a while, uh, I'd say a couple of hours. I know a lot of these varnishes tend to advertise it as um, it's touch dry within 15 to 20 minutes. However, I'd advise uh, leaving it for two hours because you just want it to make you want to make sure it all goes off properly. Um, and if you interfere with it now, you can uh, cause problems. Once you are happy, it is dry. Um, what I like to do actually is just to go over with a track rubber and um, I mean you don't have to do this but sometimes I like to just plug it in and make sure the trains are still running um, across there just in case uh, anything's become dislodged or uh, you have any problems. After this I came back in with my rocket car glue and I added my concrete slab which I did slightly earlier on and secured this into place. As with the diorama boards um, I put some weights uh, down on the uh, concrete slab because I didn't want any bending and I wanted it to sit quite flat and uh, the best way to do this is to make sure you've got some uh, adequate weights sitting on top so uh, as it, again I've just used paint um, just make sure the lids are closed because you don't want any dripping onto your slab. So the next thing I did, uh, I went about adding the, um, the scatter material uh, to where the arc welding seam would be. I came back to my solution uh, which I used on the ballast uh, which was the 50-50 mix with the, um, with the washing up liquid. Now what I did, uh, I used a paintbrush just to make sure that the um, it went down um, in all the places where I wanted it to be 
and then I came in with an earth blend uh, from Woodland Scenics, dropped that into place and um, left it like that. I then came in again uh, with that um, glue water mix and went over the scatter that I'd just done, made sure it was soaking and then came in with a couple of other uh, scatters so I used soil and um, some coarse turfs just to make sure uh, it was sitting uh, how I wanted it to. I then brought in uh, my very short section of track and uh, placed this uh, where I wanted it to go. Uh, I tested uh, one of my Land Rovers on it uh, just to see if it was um, sitting right and um, again put some weights on the um, track in this case I used weathering powders um, pots and then I added a uh, couple of flowers and coarse turf and uh, static grass uh, tufts that I had lying around uh, just to give it a little bit of depth I left that to set then uh, for another 24 hours uh, just to make sure everything had gone off as, uh, as it should have done Once the scatter material had dried, uh, I went about locating the hole that I drilled before and this was for the arc welder. Uh, I came in with my rocket car glue and uh, put that into place and uh, left it to set. I also did the same uh, with the safety barriers and the arc welding equipment itself. With the scene really starting to take shape, um, there was only really one section left now which had uh, remained untouched and this was the rear where the uh, office cabin would be. Uh, again I came in with my usual mix of the uh, asphalt and concrete uh, texture paint from the green scene, mixed this up on the actual board. Um, I tend to do this actually because I find you get different colours um, arising across the uh, section I didn't want it to look too uniform so I like to mix it actually on the board um, and I came in with that and I wanted it to be a slightly different colour uh, to where the road was on the left hand side again left that to dry um, for a couple of hours for my office um, I went about actually 3D printing that um, this is something I've never tried before. I uh, used spray paint to uh, get the Balfabiti white and blue colours and um, gave this a little bit of weathering and then um, matte sprayed that. Um, from there I then added some um, little concrete slabs on the bottom and the rocket card glued them in and uh, I was quite happy with that and then I left that to set um, for some reason I found it took a bit longer for the uh, slabs to uh, bond with the section uh, possibly due to the section being quite smooth um, maybe I should have roughened it up um, and I might have had a better bond um, but overall after a few hours um, it was rock solid. I then went about doing the same thing um, with a little blue step um, on the cabin again using rocket car glue and then I left this a while uh, to make sure the bond uh, was good. I then went about adding uh, further detailed uh, items to the uh, diorama uh, I firstly had to drill a hole uh, for the little signpost. Uh, this was a little signpost from Ten Commandments, uh, which is a white metal kit. Um, this was dropped in. I also added some uh, cable trunking, and this was the kits from Scale Model Scenery. And I just stacked them on the concrete um, slab as if they'd just been dropped off uh, from a delivery.
My next little project uh, was a stack of uh, concrete sleepers from pictures of um, rail yards that I'd seen and uh, just lying alongside uh, normal parts of a railway. Uh, these are quite common uh, little bits. Uh, th there were no kits really on offer for this, so this was something I had to scratch build. Uh, so what I did, I took a piece of Code 100 um, streamlined track, uh, took the rails out and then came along with my craft knife and uh, just chopped each um, sleeper off. Uh, this took quite a while actually, um, but it was good, uh, it was a nice little exercise to do and uh, it did give me quite a number of sleepers. So once all the um, sleepers were cut out, uh, I then went about assembling the, uh, the stack, as it were, um, using matchsticks. I cut the matchsticks uh, down uh, to a size, I think it was about the slightly longer uh, than the length of a sleeper, and uh, put these down on a, uh, a non-stick surface. Um, and then I used my rocket car glue to drop the first row of sleepers in. Uh, this was quite tricky. Um, I did anticipate the first layer would be quite difficult to put down. So I went along the uh, matchsticks and once I put the first layer down, um, I came again with the rocket car glue and uh, dripped along uh, the sleepers. I wasn't too worried actually about the glue showing on top of here uh, because realistically on the four layers, uh, you'd never see uh, this bottom layer. But once this first layer was in, uh, it was much easier then to add further layers uh, using the matchsticks and then uh, again coming along with the sleepers um, in that same fashion. In fact, as I went along, um, I did find it was easier uh, to come along with the uh, rocket car glue just to make sure they um, were a nice uh, strong um, connection between each one. I then went about adding the, um, the matchsticks uh, just in between uh, the clips of the uh, sleepers. Um, I wanted them all facing the same way. Um, from pictures online, uh, it seems to show that sleepers are stacked in this way. I don't know if that is uh, to do with how they're unloaded um, from vehicles, um, but that, that's how I went about it. And uh, again, using the matchsticks, I uh, found this to be quite effective. This uh, stack of sleepers, uh, once I'd finished with it, um, was quite full of glue and uh, it was quite vulnerable to movement at that point. Uh, so I therefore left that. Even though I'd used rocket car glue, uh, I thought it'd be best to leave that for a couple of hours uh, just to make sure it went off properly. Uh, so this let me carry on uh, with some other uh, jobs on the diorama. I went about adding some uh, fencing to the back of the diorama. Uh, at first I needed to drill some holes. Um, before putting the uh, fencing in though, I came back with um, some dabs of concrete uh, paint, well, concrete asphalt paint, um, and just dabbed them over the holes that I'd done, uh, just so that I didn't have any unsightly um, timber showing through. I then came in with my rocket car glue again, and uh, place, place this fence in, into the uh, holes and I was quite happy with how that looked. Coming along the uh, back of the fencing uh, I've added some further glue and then added some foliage. Uh, I thought this would look quite good uh, with the uh, kind of showing weeds growing and um, just kind of showing the uh, nature kind of taking back because a lot of this uh, diorama was quite grey so it was nice to get some greenery on there and uh, some of it poking through uh, the front of the fence um, maybe suggesting some housekeeping needs doing. Again once I, uh, I left this to dry and uh, came about gluing my uh, back seat onto the, um, onto the board itself uh, what I did was I came in with my rocket car glue and again with my paintbrush just um, just 
brushed it so it was nice and even on the back of the board. Um, the scene that I've used um, isn't anything special, it's just um, come out of my printer at the office. Um, so it's just paper. Uh, so I've come in and um, just tried to smoothen that out and uh, get rid of any air bubbles. Um, if any air bubbles come up, you can always come in with a needle and just pop them once it's dried. Uh, but it is best at this point to try and smoothen out uh, what you're sticking down. With the scene really starting to take shape now, um, I used my glue to put the cabin um, into place. I put the glue uh, on the bottom of the slabs and the steps to do this and uh, place this into um, its spot on the uh, diorama. I then came in and added my uh, road traffic barriers uh, which come from scale model scenery. I used rocket car glue um, along the uh, path that they would be sitting uh, alongside the ballast and uh, just added them um, along there and I left these to dry um, again left these for a couple of hours um, just so they uh, set properly I then returned back to my uh, set of uh, concrete sleepers um, they were all looking very clean and uh, on the top uh, it was showing uh, some glue so I came in with my weathering powders, it was my favourite combination of dark earth and smoke and uh, brushed over, uh, highlighting where the clips are and then um, again just coming in with, at the very end with the matte varnish uh, just sealing it all in. Whilst I left that to dry I came in and uh, glued my rails in. These were some offcuts of rail that I had um, from a previous project. Uh, I painted these up again with the um, acrylic varn, uh, acrylic paint, uh, which I used uh, to weather the track. I wanted it to match, uh, so I used a rocky hard glue to secure this into place, and uh, left that uh, for a while just to go off properly. I then came in again uh, with the concrete sleepers and then glued those into place as well. Um, then alongside that uh, I glued in some um, orange tubing. Uh, this kind of tubing can be found all over the network um, showing and it's where cables are often uh, going underneath a railway track uh, for point work uh, so I thought it looked quite good sitting next to the cable trunk in itself um, and then I also added a couple of pallets thanks for watching uh, I hope you found this useful uh, please feel free to subscribe and uh, drop a comment below and until the next time, bye for now.